The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 55, Nasdaq up 66, S&P's up 6.5, gold contract down $10, trading at $14.08 an ounce. We had silver down four cents, fifteen dollars twenty-five cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up a buck fifty-eight, fifty-nine dollars forty-one cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year down nine ticks, one twenty-seven twenty-six. Thirty-year off a half a point, one fifty-five fourteen. Now both of those continued higher yesterday. Had the volume. You're pulling back with light volume. Um, that was the first time that we broke two percent or closed below two percent since uh, like 2013. Uh, pretty uh, trippy. Uh, <laughs> King dollar, King dollar up 122 ticks, trading 95.770. Bitcoin, folks, 12,819. It's not stopping Exponential. that crypto party. To totally. Euro is at 113. The yen is trading at 107 and a half, and the pound is trading at 126 to one U.S. dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks of TD Ameritrade. Thank you, swim as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, outstanding program. You want to understand option, option strategies. Futures, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't test-driven yet the Thinkorswim platform, great time to do it. At TFNN, you hit that banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money each and every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Here we go, another day. You know, we're starting to get into the meat of this week and uh, get, getting some nice uh, data out of, you know, durable goods. Remember, it's important when you when people look at the durable goods order and you see that headline number down 1.3 percent if you're watching you know your shows and you're watching the td ameritrade network we warned you be careful of the headline number because of you know the volatility based on boeing so you take transportation out and it was actually a nice beat up 0.3 on durable goods so you know it's actually not a bad number uh i thought so some of the other data that, that we got out, the uh, international trading goods was a little worse than expected. That's, a, you know, that number got a little bigger to the negative, which took a little of, of the uh, steam out of uh, some of the futures. But, you know, it's Micron and it's Steve Mnuchin to the rescue here today. Yeah, I'll tell you, they, you know, the chip stocks, folks, I mean, they can take the, the NDX and NASDAQ up. Take sure. it down, and then the NDX takes the S&P up and down. That Micron deal, you know, it was interesting, man. I mean, when they came out with numbers last night, folks, um, the numbers were great. Their gross margin, however, went down dramatically. And after the close, you know, it was only up about a, a buck, you know. And then I'm not quite sure whether it was just that the people that the, the market liked the numbers uh, you know, there's a, there's a story in the Wall Street Journal this morning that the chip companies have gone around the Huawei uh, selling to Huawei. You know, so yeah. it's like, okay, you know, when I looked at, at all these chips, I says, okay, man, this is a different ball game now. Sure. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, but I mean, it's nice to see good news out of something like Micron. You know, they, the uh, options order flow expected about a $2.40 move. It was right at that number for a while and now it's gone way past there as you know so yeah. nice little day for them you know fedex is another story stocks up today they disappointed as you thought they would but a lot of upbeat things coming out of fedex you know this is a company getting themselves ready for you know i like the fact that they talked about the last mile they're focusing on that last mile which yeah. means you know that last didn't distribution center to the home of the retail customer and they're focusing a lot on that their move with uh dollar, dollar general is a, a nice play for them i think they're, they're they're expanding themselves getting away from amazon and so i think fedex's news you know you know this stock is down so far from where it was i think that's pretty good news as well yeah it's gonna be you know the when you when you look at fedex it's really intriguing i mean 
They changed the business, you know, you're going back 40 years now, folks, but they changed the delivery business dramatically. And it's like, okay, just as you said, Kevin, are they going to change the last mile dramatically now? That's, right. that's, you know what I mean? Because you can see when, when you look at their numbers that, like, the overnight number, folks, what has happened has gone down dramatically because all these other delivery services are really good, good at getting things to people in two days. Sure. So it's like, you know, right. you really want to spend 40 bucks for overnight? It's like, I don't think so. Right. You know, but we know that the same day, our last mile is a monster in the business. Sure. You right. Know? And that is, that has turned into the focal point of all these delivery discussions in one and two day and same day is how do we get that last mile accomplished? Yes. You know, it's, it's fascinating to think about. It really is. And, you know, there's, there's a couple stories out there, a couple of the reasons that uh, even a lot of companies are pulling out of China is that they have that last mile down so pat that they can't, you know, companies coming in from outside of China having a hard time competing with it because it's okay. like they they just won't wait. Okay. And that last mile, man, is... I don't want to wait with, for anything, man. Where the money is. Right. Yeah. No, totally, right? <laughs> it's, That's yeah, so I mean, you know, but certainly this trading day is going to be all about, you know, we're, we're leading up to... You know, the the G20, the 28th and 29th, I think the rhetoric is going to keep on going here. I think the, uh, I, you know, I thought yesterday, after I got off the air with you guys, um, I thought the comments by Jerome Powell and James Bullard were interesting. Interesting to me in the fact that was anyone really thinking that they were going to cut by a half basis point? No. Right. I, agree. Yeah. I was going I was going through the article and I was like, wait, is this the point that like this is what the market's reacting to? That it's not yeah. gonna be a half a point? I was like, wait, I, I feel like I'm missing something because obviously everybody knew that. No, I guess Yeah, Jerome Powell doesn't want to cut at all. And now the the market is disappointed because he's not gonna cut a half. <laughs> That's absurd that anyone was thinking that. Shame on them for, right. for, for think for connecting those dots. You know, and folks, what Kevin's talking about here, this is really important, you know, to, to wrap your head around because when it, when it came out, you know, that was financial headlines in a lot of them. Sure. Okay? And what I've seen even the last three or four weeks, it seems like, like this morning, I'd say it blasted across Bloomberg, well, Facebook's down. Well, Facebook's down 30 cents. Like, really? <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that being down? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you definitely better look into, uh, you know, what it is, because there's no doubt half a point, man, you know, I mean, that... Where that, did that come from? Totally, where does the rhetoric yeah, totally. on that even come from? No, exactly, exactly, yeah. There's, there's, but, but, but I thought that was absurd to think of that, and the fact that the, the, the news reports were that the market was disappointed, that's... I, I just, I, I can't get there. Well, we, I, I can barely get to one rate cut, frankly. No, listen, we know it's all about buying and selling. I mean, right. you know, what, what ends up happening, folks, is a million different headlines. It's about, guess what? And it seems like, you know, the market is about buying and selling. They seem to filter in headlines and... Uh, no, sometimes they it matter, is. sometimes they're already it, priced in, right? I know. Like Facebook not reacting to the fact that you have the president out there talking right. about like, It's got to be priced in, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. You're going to love it. Yeah. Listen, folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, you want to understand option, option strategies, defined risk. Defined risk, folks, coming into the weekend. You want defined risk. 2020 politics starts tonight, too, with the debate. Oh, man. yeah. So you want some volatility, maybe? Yeah, let's totally. See. Kevin, you have a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to your program in 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Think or Swim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow, Dow Industries up 26, Nasdaq up 51, S&P's up three. Let's go over to the gold contract here. So, uh, bottom line is that uh, what we were looking for, and you always got to be careful what you ask for. <laughs> I was waiting to make a little. <laughs> totally. Uh, did you get that pullback you were looking yeah. for? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Which so. is and this is pretty cool, folks. Okay. Yeah. So, what you have is this. You know, we were talking about the ABC structures. Uh, yesterday we got to uh, 1442. Uh, which was a 1 to 1.50 ABC up, and thank God we pulled back. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Now, this is going to be, this is a nice pullback. Um, you get 307,000 contracts while you're going into 513 and 6 and 543. So, okay. I like how this baby's pulling back. Yeah, and you got to expect to pull back at oh, some point. It's, an, it's I mean, important. We just went from 1279 on May 30th. Exactly, exactly. <sighs> to 1440. Right. right. Now watch this. So because what may be happening here, we may be setting up another B to C of another ABC structure on the way up. And if we go over to the dollar and we take a look at the dollar index, what you're going to see is that you get a little counter trend bounce happening and the dollar is already dying on the vine volume wise. So this is going to get intriguing because I'd be looking that the dollar could, you know, I mean, 96,150 it should be able to hit. That's not the, you know, even, even 96,300. That's one of the lows that were there. Just, you know, what's that? What date's that? That's that is May 13th. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's a natural spot. Even if you just go to the low that we're at here, right what is there. that? 95,890. Right. And that's what I might have just. Made. That's what's the. Did it we was, get there? 850. We got 850. To. Yeah. So if that's the case, now if that's where we kind of stop, right? That means it's even weaker, and that gold sure. is even heavier. You know what I mean? Because if you backtrack to exactly where I'd said that gold run started, you had the dollar at 97.6. Call it. Yeah. So I mean, that's dropped almost two full. Pennies, right? No dollars, right? Ninety-seven. This is ninety-seven six to ninety-five six. As right. in, there's been that huge drop in the dollar as gold. That right. literally correlates that that spot was the spot in the gold, which is interesting. So you definitely want to see them move in correlation. You do because that you know it's been when that gold run started. When gold was at that low, yep. you had the dollar at all you know these highs. Ninety-seven. Pretty wild. Right? So if you know the dollar gets 
close back up to that level. That would be a tough. It, you, you're going to see it hit gold for sure. Oh yeah. I just mean even if we go back to like uh, 90, yeah, even that's 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 a, it's a solid 600 points from where we're at right now. Yeah, which which could which would take it, you know, which, you know. So watch this, what you're gonna, what we're all gonna learn here is just how strong it is. Okay. Sure. So a natural retracement actually, you know, would bring it probably back to the breakout area. You know, they like to do that. I don't think we're doing, going there though. Um, I just wanted to see even uh, the retracement. Let's see what some of those levels off of this. Uh, yeah. So that was where I started again, May 30th. That was exactly where we were looking. All right, going up here. We'll zoom it in as well. And so you're looking, I mean... Just did a 23%. Pretty right. cool, like right on the dot, right? right? But even at 38%, that was, what, 1380 Right. You know, 0.382. Right. Um, it's still $30 below where we're at, and that would just be a 382. Exactly. And that's not some huge long-term trend. You're talking about uh, yeah, 27 days. Yep. So getting a 38% pullback of a trend that's less than a month long, yeah, you better expect that. That's possible, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Oil. That's right. We got right. oil out here this morning. We sure do. It's getting carried away with gold. We got crude oil coming up at 1030 Eastern time. Seems like they're already talking about it in the den. They got, so API had a big draw on crude at 7.5 decline, million barrels. EIA looking for a decline somewhere over around 2.5. Um, you know, before we get in there, right, let's jump around on the Bloomberg if we could, because sometimes you want to enter a... Uh, Whisper number. Yeah, let's let's see what they're looking for here and, and put our name into the hat. So the crude oil. So there we go. They are looking for whether it's a whisper number in terms of what people like ourselves, anybody talking about, um, or they get the survey. But somewhere of a decline of three million barrels, call right. it ballpark. Um, okay, you folks in the den, put a whisper number in there and we'll try to even it off. We'll go from we got we got about a couple minutes. Yeah. We, we well we had two minutes on the dot to, okay. to make an entry. Good. So we're gonna jump back. We'll start start looking at the trades. We got yeah. two minutes. We'll remember it. We'll see if they want. So uh, the expectations the decline of about three million barrels. We got crude trading at fifty nine twenty two. The eleven a m. Expiration spreads. We could have an option to buy and sell with exposure from fifty nine dollars. So about twenty two cents away. We'll jump into the, uh, excuse me, the noons. 59.50 would be our pivot point, so about 30 cents away. I was looking to see if we could get a 59.25, right? right? That would be Which your would ideal be here. So before we set it up, we'd have exposure from 59 at the 8 a.m. to 2.30s and 59 as well. <coughs> excuse me. So it looks like 59 is going to be our best option if you want exposure, bullish and bearish, as in you're 23 cents away, because that noon... It's going to set up at 59.50. That's almost identical, right? So in this situation, you'd almost want to have a bullish or a bearish bias because you're either going to gain exposure from 59 or you're going to gain exposure from 59.50. Either way, you're getting about a 25 cent uh, yes. start to, to the heads up. All right, we have a guest, so let's go. We're going to go back. Where are we? There we are. We got 45 seconds. Okay. They're looking for minus 4.5 million. That's good. And then see if you can, he, he's looking for a. Uh, okay. Gasoline, too? Yeah, but I think it'll be a drawing gasoline. Let's do a drawing gasoline. Okay. Is that in? I think it is. Let's get our gas. And what are we looking for for gas? Uh, he just said a draw. Okay. Well, that's good. We'll yeah. go, uh, we'll go, we'll go, we will go, we're going to go five, minus 500, all right? Okay. Okay. With 10 seconds to spare. You get action in there. Perfect. <laughs> um, so oil, man, quite a pop, right? I mean, that's where this, uh, that's where these spreads aren't exactly calibrated at the price it's trading at because they're going to open at the price that it's trading at as that spread becomes available throughout the day. And you had oil trading at $59 for majority of it, which is why you have these exposures from um, 59 all the spread setting up. But if you're bullish, not a bad trade and that even... Uh, 59 to 62, you're getting in 26 cents above the market, but your losses are capped down at 59, you get to push to 62. Not right. a bad trade when right. you talk about you have until 2.30. and you We've get, had the volatility in oil, right. there's no and, doubt about you that. Know, if you're directionally biased and you happen to hit it on the head, as in you're right, not a bad trade to have your losses capped 50 cents below where you're at and you get $2.50 above you. And we're gonna go over to uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> oh boy. So Bitcoin, we got out. Call from Paul yesterday, uh, and him and his wife—they've been 
hodling with the right. That's a, hold that's, on for dear life. Yeah, hold on for dear life. Hold except, on, hodling. Except, yeah. except they got it at very low prices, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's but look at this move, folks. This is yeah. like sick. Pretty remarkable. The last day. Twelve thousand nine thirty-eight. We hit today. We're at twelve thousand eight fifty-six right now. Yeah, I mean, you didn't think, I didn't think it had a $2,000 jump in it um, yesterday in the span of a day, almost in either direction, especially to the upside. Um, and pretty remarkable, just it wasn't, you know, it was it was the whole time. It was the whole night. It was yep. from 6 o'clock. The, the thing practically didn't stop, you know, and it made it all the way up to 12, 9.38 by 1 a.m. in the morning. So it was a run up. Yeah. And look at how far it went down, too. <laughs> Back here? Yeah. Yeah. Is that eleven thousand? That is twelve one. So okay. you're talking about eight hundred dollars, so um, yeah, it's a good it's a good pullback. Oh my god. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's up forty-four, Nasdaq's up fifty-three, SP's up four and a half. We're coming right back. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated Concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Look at that number. Do we have a number? We do have a number, man. You got crude oil inventories falling. We should have went bigger. Go big or go home, man. <laughs> falling 12.79 million barrels. Gasoline inventories falling 996,000. That's what you can expect Boom. when you get almost a 13 million barrel build uh, draw. 
Yes. And you'd expected three, man. That price just jumped almost a full dollar. And uh, pretty cool. That's the, quite a draw. The one, the one trade that we we're possibly looking at, right? You were getting in at 59.50 in this. The market was trading about 59.25. You're already up 33, 34 dollars as this thing's ticking at 59.80. Um, and it's going to trade pretty close. You're just marginal to the market right now as you're a solid almost dollar into the spread. But man, that is quite a number. And yeah, 59.25 up to 59.90 in the span of a heartbeat. And let's see if they got uh yeah we'll see the full breakdown man but that that is quite a number and i imagine gasoline inventories as well because that's on the bottom end of that range they might have been looking for a draw of only a couple hundred thousand to flat for gasoline yeah and then uh, the xle right now it's up a buck 33 and uh not stopping no and so <laughs> will be interesting here is that the the swing point on the xle is uh 63.78 and we're going right after it and it doesn't look like it's going to be an ABC up, but hey, we'll see if uh, get the volume because that's 25.9 million there. Okay. That we're going into, and we only got 2.8 right now. If we can look at some of, so we started to check out uh, some of the refinery they were talking about, right? Yes. Uh, let's see. So where are we? The top live, yeah, because it was kind of cool how they were talking about when this data actually is. So here's the full breakdown too. You have gasoline. Yeah, decline of about a million barrels. Crude decline of 12.788. Gasoline, the estimate was pretty much flat, I think. And let's see where... Distilled, too. Big draw in distilled. Yeah, distilled missed by 2.4. That's pad 3 minus 6.2. Um, a big portion of that, but it's it looks like it's everywhere, man, because even Cushing plus the distillate plus the pad 3, you're still not at 12.788 yet, you know? So, I mean, just constant all across the board. Uh, so the refinery right yes in in philadelphia so they do a good job of kind of talking about what you can expect here coming up to this report and so it's important to note that the weekly petroleum status report starts the period on friday at 701 a.m and ends at 701 a.m the following friday that means last week's report might not encompass all of the fallout from the philadelphia energy solutions explosion and fire um, and then to that point, we might not see crude imports into the U.S. East Coast taking a hit in this week's report because of uh, that refinery fire. The region's weekly average has been 794 barrels per day over the past five years, so, and it might not see any effects at all for a good few weeks if they manage to resell its predominantly foreign crude imports to other refiners along the U.S. Eastern right. Seaboard. Right, because you can picture, these boats are already out there right. on the way. Right, so it's interesting, right. you know. They have um, to redirect them. It's a, it's a great point a redirect just to, sell. to think about, right. And so the point being that those those are going to come. Those are already on the way, and maybe you see an, an upsetting of the market in the next week or two as they reevaluate all that. Uh, and yeah, so S&P Energy Index, which one's that? That's spiking, that's for sure. Um, gasoline demand, which almost got to 10 million barrels per day last week, backs off considerably. Product supply down 452,000 barrels per day to 9.47 million um, in the week ended. Let's just see. We'll check back to see how the market's still moving. So hanging up there, 59.70, yeah. we'll check back in, but quite a pop. That's and, a strong buy. And I am, I mean, this is where if, if oil, oil ever gets back to where we were or lower, then what's going on in that market exactly. for a draw like yeah. that? That would be Which is so very, cool. very yeah. weak if right. it was ever able to. I don't, I right. don't, I don't, I would be surprised. Yeah. But surprised often. On well, the, the, cool, the cool thing is that that's where the divergence would be huge, which is, you know, because oh. that shouldn't happen. It's just right. common sense. If oil can't trade higher when you have a... Uh, EIA of a 13 million barrel draw, yeah. then good luck to the bulls because that's a tough one. Totally. Yeah. Let's go to Apple. So you, you get the chip stocks taking a, a lay higher, you know, and Apple's up 450. So it's going to be intriguing to see if it get any juice behind it, you know, and it's not going to need a lot. And it looks like it's going to have it. 8.2 million shares. And, you know, you know this, that, that, uh, that was option expiration. That was a monster day, 47. Yes. But the rest of these days, you know, 21 million. 26 million it's going to do that you know so but that takes out that little um, a to b or that b point then 215 is going to be game uh i don't think that's the high i think apple's much higher than that but no no yeah there is that's yeah yeah 233 so yeah this is just one one yeah. little swing point up there yeah i mean apple has to like the news 
from Mnuchin in terms of a uh, potential China deal, right? They get a lot going on over there. I'm sure that's given them right. a pop today right. um, at the idea that they're, quote, unquote, 90 percent of the way there. Whether that's based in truth and fact, who knows? But yeah, <laughs> well, not, well, I think Larry had put up uh, one of the tigers put up uh, at Larry's show uh, that Trump had said that we're ninety five percent there. Okay, but the date was May thirteenth. Okay, right. <laughs> that was yeah. It's right. been a tough six weeks. Then we back from ninety five to ninety. Yeah, exactly. So some of the higher volume equities out here today. You got uh, let's see, Caesars. Oh, that's that's flat. We have uh, oh, Apple up 457, Microsoft up 149, NVIDIA up 840. We'll go to NVIDIA in a second. Yeah. Allergen up 218, uh, Western Digital up 335, Facebook uh, plus 149. So let's go to NVIDIA first and take a look. This is an equity that no doubt has got smoked. You, know, you get a nice bump up today. And well, that's going to be a small ABC up. It's only tiny though. It's yet uh, what 142. Oh. Uh, so uh, 15 points. 15 to 157. points. We get in 165. But this is uh, you can see these stocks are I mean heavy commodity stocks. Just look at that downtrend. Sure. I mean when there's a chip glut, folks, there's a chip glut. <laughs> I mean in a huge way. Yeah. Um, oh, let's do this. So canopy. We're talking about canopy um, as to cannabis, the whole ball of wax. Yesterday, what ended up happening is that Illinois... Yeah, Illinois. Went... Joined in the party. Yeah. And so this is the first time... There's an article here that's pretty cool. I heard you talking about. What yeah. was it? 100 million people or 100, 90, 90 million people nine, that have nine, access to... 90 million uh, recreational. recreational. Okay. Uh, big number. And... Yeah, it's a decent-sized number. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be interesting. I mean, it looks to me that they're going to get to the lower end of this consolidation, or where they actually, it's, it's a huge consolidation they're in. And we'll see whether, you know, they can, whether it's going to be a commodity business or it's going to be something different. Um, you know, because the, the spread differential on what they were selling it for went down dramatically, you know. So, I mean, they went from a, I think they went from a 40 to 45 percent to 16 percent. Margin. Yeah. That's pretty intense. Yeah. But that's normal in a commodity business. And so, guess what? You know, farmers aren't making that kind of money. I mean, you're talking about spreads that are tremendously lighter. Yeah. And the real question is going to be is that, is that what it's going to turn into? Which, which you can see it turn into it. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, until you get someone like, uh, the next deal would be like, Specialties, right? Like special scotches and all that. What are they? I sure. mean, someone's going to come up with that. Well, yeah. of course, Constellation Brands and Philip Morris are already in the business. So yeah. That's where they're going to get you a premium. You have branded stuff already. Snoop Dogg's got his deal out. Okay. You know, so that's, yeah. that's a right. premium, right? Is it? Okay. Yeah, right. Well, whether it is, it's marketed as. Right. right. Stay right there, Tommy and I come right back. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, Trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523.
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 59. Nasdaq's up 56. S&Ps are up 6. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakes. That as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlocks.com. That's forex-trading-unlocks.com. Teddy Cakes, what's going on, brother? morning guys we got some signals for you in the forex markets today oh we like that you gave us some good ones last week man i mean that uh yeah, I, we, we had some good turns here man uh well one of your favorite currencies i know is the u.s dollar yen so why don't we start with that one awesome um yesterday they planted a nice new move low uh to start the trading week off and they've uh, rallied off that ever since into today's trade and right now they're actually kind of near their highs for the day and that's something that's indicated in a lot of the currency crosses against the dollar. Uh, the yen um, stamped a new move low yesterday, and now they're higher again today. So we have a lot of bullish momentum for the U.S. dollar. So I don't think it's Japanese uh, weakness. It's more U.S. dollar strength that's being indicated here in front of the G20 meeting. Okay. And then you have the same thing going on in the uh, U.S. dollar Swiss. They slammed a brand new low yesterday because um, they've all been trading and trending for the past week and a half. And then off of that low, they're higher again today. So, and there's also a short-term buy signal as of the close of yesterday. So, meaning once again, U.S. dollar strength is coming into the market. And this is all on the eve of the G20 meetings coming uh, coming up this uh, week. Yeah, and that's interesting. The the Swiss broke that swing point going back there a bit. Yeah, interesting, man. I mean, Absolutely. it came right back, but you can see that it did, did break it. So. Yeah. Right, and now it's pretty solid. Now, since the U.S. markets have opened, they've come back a little bit off their highs of the day, but they're still pretty strong. And then we have also, we have the pound dollar, where the pound made a new high against the dollar yesterday and then fell off it sharply. That gave us a sell signal on the close also for the short term. Okay. So it's a little mixed today. I don't know where it is right now. It was lower earlier um, when I looked at it, but then it was a little bit um, unchanged. Yeah, it's, it's almost flat, 126.84, right. So, and then we have, last but not least, we have the Euro US dollar. Um, that gave us a, a, a bearish engulfing signal as of the close of yesterday, and they were slightly lower earlier, and right before this, uh, we signed down here, it was right around even to lower, so I don't know, it's, it's right around there. Yes. So, and uh, so that gives us a confirmation right now that we have four major currencies where we have bullish momentum in the dollar. So if you don't, if any of your viewers trade those currencies, I would say, be careful fading the dollar right now. I would not be. Why? If you're if you're already against the dollar, keep your stops tight and don't try and move that against you know further because that would one it's a bad mistake to trade that way anyhow. And this would be a move where we could see a build going on into Thursday's trade before it starts to kind of settle into a range trade before the G20 meeting. Yeah, I guess I mean there's no doubt the G20 is going to move markets. I mean that's you know <laughs> they, well it has the capability of moving markets. That's for sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And what will end up happening, folks, is it's in Japan, so that's going to be 24 hours ahead of us. Well, no, 12 hours ahead of us. Yeah, interesting. Right. Yeah, so. It's yeah. always dinner time in Chicago when, Japan, when you look at Japan. <laughs> I, I say that again? I said dinner time in Chicago is when you watch Japan. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Much. No, there's not, listen, you know, so. it, it, it's, it, it is amazing. There's no doubt. When that yen gets stronger, uh, that, that gold market just goes to the moon, man. I mean, it's pretty right. intense. Now, how about that? What do you think about the gold market? I think going into this meeting, do you think it's going to get kind of into a range trade over the next couple of days? Well, I like that it's backing down right now because that move was so exponential on the way up. Do you know sure. what I'm saying? I, I like this little rest. That's what we need. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like it's coming back with lighter volume than we went up on. So at this point, I, I like what's going on. And even the dollar index, uh, the way it's trying to get into the highs of yesterday, it doesn't have the juice. Uh, right. So it looks to me like, yeah, it's a counter trend bounce. But as you said, I, I think it's time for counter trend bounce. That's what it comes down to. So sure. you know, we'll see sure. how this uh, baby shakes out. Uh, mm -hmm. the and I think that your, your viewers should be very cautious if they're trading any of the derivatives markets over the next couple of days because we have all the big dogs coming to the table this weekend in Japan, you know. So and between the tariff, uh, you know, talks as well as we have the Brexit talks. You know, there's there's a lot of key fundamental economic things that are on the table that it's not like normal G20 meetings where like, hey, we're going to talk about this issue and how we're going to maybe deal with it over the next couple of years. These are things that are at the forefront. We are going to have some sort of resolution with the tariff war eventually. Um, and Brexit, I don't know, October 31st, they keep on pushing dates out, but eventually it will happen, right? Right. No, no, I, I, there's no doubt. Yeah, you get a lot of moving pieces there, man. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. They're it's all an interesting right Fourth of July week. Yes. Yeah, and, you know, well, that's why they say it's fireworks, man, right? You know? Right. I, yeah. And, and, you know, what's pretty wild is that you can see, you know, Draghi last week, I mean, bottom line, he's saying, hey, man, you know, if I have to, you know, put some juice into the market, you know, I'm going to do it. Um, right. You know, so I suspect even these central bankers are all looking out for themselves, you know. Sure, so, sure. You know, it's like once this thing sure. starts, okay, you know, where are we going to go with the whole deal? They're so. not central bankers for the world. They're central bankers for the country, right? Exactly. And that's a, yeah, right. for sure. Oh, right. Yeah, no. right. And the ECB guys, I wouldn't doubt that if by, by August they start to do some sort of quantitative easing uh, um, moves. Yeah, because it's going to be interesting. They, they've had plenty of time to try to figure out what will happen if you get a hard Brexit, you know? Because, I mean, the, the more that this keeps going, I'm try what I'm trying to figure out is that it's been going on for so long that, like, even if they leave in a hard Brexit, it's an easy Brexit right now because some of these companies have figured something else out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, now. We've, we've been going on a year and a half now. Yeah, they still you know? have no trade deals, though. You know? That's, the, that's yeah. the hard Brexit that would, they would hit them on day one. Yeah. Right. So. Interesting. Yes, yes definitely. I, oh, the, <laughs> There's no doubt. It's going to be next week. Next week will definitely be a weird holiday week with the 4th of July breaking it up and stuff. So. Yeah. And it, what, 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 what Teddy's saying here, folks, and this is what is really a trip. So picture, 4th of July is Thursday. No one's going to be working Wednesday by 11 o'clock in the morning. Market has a half day on Wednesday, actually. We oh, it does? The, yeah. So oh, that's that, awesome. Just that means no one's going to work Tuesday. It really breaks <laughs> up the week. It does. Yeah, guys, let me know now. I won't be here next week. No, okay. totally, man. Good for man. you. We, no. we won't either Wednesday that, afternoon. Uh, wow. We, we might in the morning, actually. But yeah, that's, no, that's because we'll close when the market closes, right. which I believe is 1 o'clock on that Wednesday that, prior to the 4th. Oh. I always find that one amusing because July 4th Eve, not a huge holiday. I know. Um, but, but I'll they, take it. They should, I'll take it. No, they should have gave us off July 5th, man. Yes. What's wrong with them? That's right. We I don't know. get any days off, folks, okay? We, 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 I, <laughs> it, it, isn't it funny, Teddy? We get a, we get a streak. We, when's the, the streak? The market, uh, it's closed more often in the beginning of the year because yeah. you get, you get um, right. MLK, you get President's Day, right. Um, right. you get this July 4th, right. but then once you get into the back end, you pretty much get... Uh, this the, is... This is where we get that stretch of no days off anymore. Right, 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 right. right. And, yeah. you know, and, you know yeah. you get. as we were just saying, that, that, that's, currency-wise, folks, this is going to be a trip then from Wednesday all the way to Sunday night because mm -hmm. yes. the gold closes from Friday anyway. Oh, I agree. Open Sunday right. night in Australia. That Friday is going to be like the Friday after Thanksgiving, kind of the similar, right. uh, yes. you know. Yes. Put on your option positions, guys. Yeah, they, yeah. Can, they can move that thing anywhere. That's what, that's what the right. trades are going to be, is in the options. 
Big time. Sure. Teddy, you have a great one, a safe one. Well, yeah. listen, man, happy 4th of July. Have too. a great 4th, man. Thank you. I'll see you guys in two weeks. You sure awesome. will, pal. Who knows what we'll be in two weeks, man. Too. Yeah. Think of all the answers we'll have from that G20 by then. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, have a great Teddy. one, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 63. Nasdaq's up 55. S&Ps are up 6.5. And, and that uh, oil contract is hanging tough. The first move is the one that's just kind of hanging there, right? 59.70. We're up about 50 cents from that price point. You could have thought that it was going to go a little bit higher, man, considering we got 70 cents of movement almost in the span of a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, we're... It's quite we're, a draw. We're looking, yeah, 12.7 million barrel draw. Um, we'll see if we can hit $60. We'll see. Coming at us. Let's just look quickly inside the Dow Industrials and see what the movers are inside there. You got uh, Intel, the baby. Intel. Intel. Yeah. We got chip stocks. We got Apple trading yeah. higher on uh, maybe some trade concerns easing. Microsoft. And yeah. Boeing. 31 positive points. Boeing. 30. Apple taken away from it. United Health 19 minus. Johnson Johnson 17. Not just to jump back, but I was like, where are the oils? And there they are. Chevron. Yeah. You got uh, Exxon Mobil. They should be up with you know that type of build. You got oil up uh, almost two bucks now off of yesterday's extension as well. And then of course in the NDX, it's all about uh, chips. You got Micron, Micron up twelve and a half percent. 
Western Digital up 8%, NVIDIA up 5.3%, and then C-Trip. C-Trip is a, uh, a Chinese internet uh, company. Okay. Um, you know, Maybe they're liking the fact that there's some trade easing concerns as well. Oh, yeah. A lot of those Chinese companies are the ones that really could be hurt if things go oh, bad. Because the U.S. companies, they'll be okay. They'll recalibrate if they have to or something. Some of those Chinese companies need to be selling their items to the U.S. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, this, this, yeah. it's... We we'll quickly go take a look at this gold market. So intraday out here, we got down to uh, 1405. You're at okay. 1412. I like the setup. Get ready for some volatility. On I that like gold. the setup. Stay right there, folks. We got fast market coming up next. And of course, we have our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Bam! Go get them, folks.